Hello, Movadi On Demand. My name is Tracy Kelly, and I'm one of the trainers here at the club. If you have any soft music that you'd like to play, feel free to. The music is definitely optional. We're going to do a lower body mobility routine. You could do this every day if you wanted to. It'd be great to do before you go on a hike or walk, exercise. It can be a standalone. It can be a warm up. I have a weight only for the last exercise, and that's to test to see if my squat got better than it did at the beginning. You just need a strap, um, alpha ball if you have one, or even a foam roller, okay? We're going to stand up just for a second, and we're going to test out our squat, okay? Think of a goblet squat. So if we had our heels about shoulder distance apart, feet would be turned out. We're just going to go down and up. And just ask yourself, how does it feel? I'll tell you, I fell on the ice yesterday, and my right knee, not too happy. So I can feel myself kind of shifting a little bit, but I can also feel how it doesn't want to go down too low, okay? Plus, I've been sitting around for a week doing a way too much of a little bit of snacking and that. We're going to now do a couple of exercises, some mobilization techniques, some activation techniques. Then we're going to go back and take a look and see if our squat is even deeper than when we just started, or maybe even just feels better. Okay, so coming down, we're going to come and do our calves first. So if you had an alpha ball, feel free to just put it behind the back of the right leg, sitting up nice and tall. Just find a spot, just find a tender spot. Think of pointing and flexing the foot if, if the pain sensation isn't too high. Okay, so we always want to talk about this pain scale. If it's between one and five, feel free to move. Now you'll see I'm making circles. If it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just hold. Just take big breaths in and exhale, let it go. If you're not getting enough sensation, whoo, that's a little spicy for me, then cross the other hand leg on. Now we're only going to hit a minute on each side. So this really is considered every day if you had the time or as a warm-up. So I don't want to spend a long time here. Now we're on to the left calf. Find somewhere that's tender. Mine's usually gravitates a little bit out and a little bit higher up. Yours might be somewhere else. So if you found a tender spot, begin to point and flex as long as you are between one and five on that pain scale. Now, you're like, Tracy, I'm at a spot. I feel nothing. This feels great. Go to another spot or maybe add that weight. If you're still not feeling that much, you need to take your time and find somewhere that's juicy, okay? We've got about 10 seconds left. If you had the foam roller, it would be as simple as doing this, okay? We're gonna move on to our hamstrings. Now the hamstrings are just up above. So let's stay on this leg. I've got the foam roller, and then you could stay down, you could bring yourself up. Now, I don't have a chair here with me, but if I had any wrist issues, and maybe you can wiggle a little bit from side to side, if I had any wrist issues, I could sit on a chair with the leg bent, and this would be underneath, okay? It's another option. You've got a few more movements there. So this one could be a bend and extend, an internal and an external rotation. I'm showing with the foam roller on this side. I'll show you with the ball on the other side. Really, you just want to get to a spot, get in there, and get it moving. And the reason why we're not spending a ton of time as well is for you to get into the habit of not just doing this for an hour once a week, of just finding just one spot. If you committed to just finding one spot every single day, by the end of the week, you're going to hit all those spots anyway. And you're more apt to do this if it's not too long. So I've just found a nasty spot. It's halfway pretty much for me between my sit bone and my, the back of my knee. And I'm just, just a little pushing, rotating in and out. Make sure you're breathing. I like the ball because I don't really have to lift myself up and put a lot of weight onto my wrist. I find that it almost feels as if you get a, you're getting a fist that's pushing right into there, okay? All we have left, guys, is our hip flexors and our quads. 
So I'm going to come up onto my knees so I can show you how to find your hip flexor. So let's do our right hip flexor first. So I've got a pocket here. If I put my hand in that pocket, or even imaginary pocket, and I lift my right foot up a little bit and wiggle it side to side, I can feel this muscle. It's not directly onto the side. It's not right into the, middle, uh, the, the front. It's kind of in between the two, and it's really called your TFL, when we're calling hip flexors. There's a lot of hip flexor muscles. This one we're going to hit today, okay? So I've got the ball into my left hand. I come onto my left elbow. I lower down onto my right elbow. I extend my right leg out. My left knee is pulling in, and I'm putting it right on that spot. Now, when I get there, I can wiggle a little bit from side to side. I can go up and down. If I find something that's a little too tender, I can just hold and breathe, big breath in, exhale, let it go. My apologies, I have to cough. <coughs> big breath in, and let it go, two more. If I wanted to move my leg, I could. Side to side. Good, and we're out of there. Let's do the other side. So again, how do we find that spot? I'm going to make sure I'm not laying on my mic here. I imagine that I'm putting my hand in my pocket. I lift up my foot. I wiggle it a little bit from side to side, and I feel a muscle. I feel a muscle contracting. That's actually your TFL doing its work. So that's where we're going to put the ball. So ball is in the opposite hand, lowering down. I extend out that left leg. I'm turning, actually, the foot inwards. Oh, OK. I found a spot. Feels good. Now it's a <laughs> little tighter on this side. So I might not even move around. I might just stay here. Remember that scale, 1 to 10. So 1 to 5, move. 6 to 10, don't move, just breathe. So just big breath in. Exhale, let it go. And that would make sense. Remember I said I slipped on the ice yesterday. So this side is a little more tender. And I didn't even realize it until I stuck a ball there, right? I knew I felt a little different on this side. But now I can see, like, yeah, it definitely did something on this side. I'm a little tighter. Might have pulled a little something. Perfect. If you're moving, feel free to move. All right, guys, and the last one is the quads. Now, the quads are the front of the thigh. I don't like to waste time. I like to get right to the sweet spot. The sweet spot on your right side is halfway between your hip bone and your kneecap, and it's this juicy little place. Now, if you have any low back issues, you might want to put a pillow underneath your belly so that this doesn't hurt, OK? There should be no back pain, OK? Just soften for a moment. Ask yourself 1 to 10, OK? 1 to 5, move. 6 plus, don't move. So mine doesn't feel too bad. Woo-hoo-hoo! It does now, and that's the thing. The minute you move, you've increased. You're going to ramp it up. So if you're sitting at a 6 and you decide to move, you're really going to bring it up to an 8 and a 9, OK? Just two more guys if you're doing the movement. Oh, I'm regretting my decision of moving. <laughs> Last one. I think that was three. Ooh, ooh. And bring that off. Let's roll to the other side. Again, I just know that the sweet spot, maybe another day when you come back and do this, you're going to go maybe a little bit closer to the knee. Okay? Take a moment, kind of assess how it feels. Again, I'm noticing on this side, this is the side that I um, kind of tweaked yesterday. This feels like it's sitting about a 5.6. So I'm not going to move on this side. I'm just going to hold. But if you're doing it and it feels like it's anywhere between that 1 and 5, feel free to bend and extend the leg, OK? So if we're bending, I'm going to lift up a little bit. And you really shouldn't to do that. You really should be relaxing down into it, just to show you. If you're bending, give me a few more bends. I'm just going to hang out here and try to keep my shoulders relaxed and my face soft. 
Oh boy. I know it always helps, eh, when the trainer's doing it with you and she's suffering as much as you are. <laughs> I always find that helps. Two more breaths, guys. Big breath in. Let it go. And last one. Big breath in. And done. So just like that, you've hit, an, uh, you've hit uh, a lot of those good spots, okay? Now, I did forget one part. What did I forget? Do you guys know? Glutes. I forget the glutes. We need those for lower body. I like to work higher up in the high glute, okay? So if you thought about a jean pocket, it's actually right at the top part of the jean, okay? Again, you can use your uh, foam roller if you want to. I like to, again, come up, and I'm leaning a little bit to the side. So I'm going to find a spot. Okay, there's a spot. That feels pretty tender. Trying to keep yourself upright. What would be the move here? If I wanted to move, I could drop the knee out and back up, and out and back up. If I needed to stay still, I would stay still. Okay, again, dropping and lifting. Perfect. You're doing great, guys. Excellent. We're getting ready to switch to the last side. Oh, then we go into another phase of mobility, but now think of it as a lot more stretching, but active, active dynamic types of stretching. Excellent. Just so you can see if I was using the foam roller, what I would do. So let's switch on to the left glute. When I came up onto this, it notice it's a lot higher. I again would lean into it. Okay assess. So let's find a spot. Yep, there we go. I found a good spot. Did you find a good spot? I hope you found a good spot. Of course, you might be going, Tracy, it's not a good spot. It's a terrible spot. I didn't know I had so many spots. I know. Believe me, I know. And it really does start to get better. The magic of this, and I do give this for homework, is I know that people are going to start doing it because they start feeling better. Their knees start to feel better. The low back starts to feel better. They start moving better. When they go for a walk, they don't have as much pain. When they go and do a class, they feel better. It's just, it's, it's, I could talk about it for hours, if not days, so I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> if you're dropping the leg out to the side, give me two more drops. And just like that, done. Okay? Moving on. So we're going to move into what's called a low cat camel. Okay? Now in yoga, yes, we know, we know our cat cow. This is a cat camel. What I want you to do is you're coming onto hands and knees, but then I want you to lower down onto your elbows. Now I would love it if you were able to keep your hands apart. But if you need to have them closer, feel free to do so. In this position, you're going to push just a little bit into the elbows, come into that cat position, see if you can look back between your knees, and then belly drops, and you're going in the opposite position. So we're tucking, and we're releasing. Okay, We're tucking. Now, the farthest I look forward is just to my thumbs. I don't look up because I don't want to hurt my neck. Keep going, guys. Remember, you've just got that little tuck. So really, we're starting to move our pelvic area in our posterior and anterior position. And some of us, a lot of us, get stuck in more than one of these positions. The elbows are right underneath the shoulders and the knees are directly underneath the hips. We're only going for about four more, so there's not a lot of repetitions. It's just starting to kind of think of it as lubricating uh, the joints, right? Or if you had some jippy lube and you were hitting it on a squeaky area, maybe on your door frame. <sighs> Good. Two more, guys. Just two more. Last one. Perfect. Now we're going to come down and we're going to move into a active assisted leg raise. Now I'm a little picky about this. I'm going to put that ball in there so it doesn't. I have a stretchy strap. You could use a yoga strap. Nothing wrong with that. 
we're going to strap our left foot. Now, I've got shoes on. I don't need to have bare feet. If I've got shoes on, I'm going to make sure that I can put it on the arch of my foot. If I have bare feet, I'm going to put it more up onto the ball of the foot. Okay? There's a lot of nerves down here, that your plantar fascia, and we don't want to irritate that. Okay? When we lie down, I want you to imagine you're crunching up for a moment. Take a look. Take a look at your feet. Make sure that you're pulling the toes towards you. That's dorsiflexion. And your knees are pointing straight up. When you lie down, I want you to take your right leg and push it down through the floor. Grab the strap, but very light. See how it's loosey, loosey, goosey? And then I lift the leg all by itself, all by itself, as far as it will go. Then I grab onto the strap, I pull just a little bit, pause, and then I lower it all by itself again. Again, lift up, grab on, give it a little pull, and lower back down. It's very important that the legs are super straight in this position, and they're super active, as if you were standing on your feet. Okay, so you're not relaxed in this position. It's an active, straight leg. The assist only happens when you are at the top of your move. And if you're here, that's it. Nothing wrong with that, okay? You gotta be where you are. We've got six more, guys. We're lifting. Now, if you've got a good contraction, you're gonna feel your quad, because your quadricep is working right now which also stretches out your hamstring. My strap's a little bit too low, so I'm going to bring it down. Keep going, guys, lifting up. Now, I know you get tired in this. This is an exercise. Believe me, it's a stretch, very dynamic, but it's also an exercise. So you might feel your heart rate coming up, and you're definitely going to feel unhappy with your teacher, OK? <laughs> I want you to keep going. It will get better and better. Let's do two more. And one now. Now I'm going to show you the lazy way to switch, OK? So hold it up. Finish that pull. Bend your right leg. Bring your other foot up and switch, OK? If you need to roll up and switch your feet, please do so. Extend both legs out. Let's crunch. Let's take a look. Make sure feels very strong like we're standing, activating our left leg, pushing it down through the floor, head is back down and relaxed, and we are actively lifting up all by itself, little pull, there's the stretch, and back down, okay? I want you to keep going. You're going to notice that one leg is so much better at this than the other. Over time, we want that leg the leg that's not as flexible, to get a little bit more flexibility. I find, and there's no uh, written rule in this, but usually the more flexible leg isn't necessarily the, the stronger leg. So you'll have my right leg is actually my weaker leg. It's more flexible, but it's not as strong. So I don't quite get the cramp that I'm talking about when you lift up and pull and then press down. I get a much better contraction in my quadriceps on my left side. This is your right side that we're doing. I know I've been talking. Let's do four more, guys. Four more. Lift, pull, and lower. Again, lift, pull, and lower. Good. We got two more, guys. Just two more. And last one. And then we're going right into a T-spine rotation. Perfect. So that is done. Again, you can be super lazy like me and just remove it off while you're laying down, but you don't have to. Some of you might need a little bit of a pillow for this, OK? You're going to lie now directly on your side. So in yoga, I do believe they call this an open book, OK? You're going to keep your knees stacked. You'll notice, see how I have that knee and it just floated away? I'm not really moving the way I should be moving in this. So if you need to 
put a block or a pillow like I'm doing, please do so. You're going to lock those legs still at 90 degrees. You're going to open up from your thoracic spine. You're going to get into your end range and then slowly come back out. We're just looking for eight to 10 of these. Again, if you're doing this every day, you're going to get so much better, right? Think of the last time that you really had the opportunity to twist. We don't do it that much anymore. Good. I think maybe the last time I had to twist was to reach back into the back seat in the parking lot because I needed to grab something. Can't remember what it was, but that's how long ago it was. Good. I'm going to go for four more for ten. So this is a really great option if you want to elevate that leg. It'll make it easier to get into the twist. That end range, I'm just trying to press my shoulder blade down. Just a bit, just a bit, just a bit. Good, and last one. Excellent, and we're to the other side. Now I'm going to turn the other way. I think I'll turn myself to this direction, but I'm going to keep the knees on top of one another, and I'm opening up. Now you'll notice that my twist is much better on one side compared to the other. Okay? Now you keep going and pressing, and I don't really want to have my back to you guys, so I want you to keep opening and twisting into that open position, keeping those knees stacked. When you come into, as far as you get, you'll feel a little sticky. Just give that shoulder a little drop and then release out. Good. Guys, four more. Last four. So you don't think about it. Last three. But when you squat, you got to use your spine as well, right? When you're moving your lower body, your trunk is working as well. And that's why we want to incorporate some of these spinal movements as well. Perfect. Did we finish that? Excellent. All right. The last one before we come into our activation phase is shin boxes. Now in shin boxes, we're sitting up nice and tall. We've got our heels you notice they're much farther out than my mat, so I'm out pretty far. I don't want to be slumped in this position. I want to be nice and tall. Now, when I drop in my right knee, I'm only going to go to my degree. I'm going to feel maybe a pulling on the inside of the knee. Maybe I'll feel one up by the hip. I keep that right glute down, and then I come up, and then I switch sides, and I drop, and then I lift. So keeping those feet flexed, you might notice as well, it almost looks like a 90 degree bend here. And we're looking for that because that's the, one of the safest positions for our knee. It's in a nice, safe 90 degree bend. I want you as you go from side to side, and there's only six per side, so this is three. Can you feel the differences on the sides when you do this? Does it feel like one can go down lower? right? This to you looks like my left, but this is actually my right. It can go down quite a bit lower, so it's definitely more mobile. Good. Keep going. I feel it, though, on that side, almost a little bit on the inside of the knee, right? So I don't go too deep into it. On this side, I feel a lot more into the outer part of the hip, Good, drop again. Now you get a little bit tired in this, so be careful that you're not slouching because it's not going to feel the same. Remember, you're sitting up nice and tall on both sit bones. We're dropping. Good, and one more. Whoo! And perfect. All right, so we finished the second part of our mobilization. Now we want to activate. We want to activate our glutes and get them in the game because uh, let's be honest we spend a lot of time sitting on them and they really don't know how to work the way they used to I don't know if I remember really thinking about my glutes working when I was in my 20s but I definitely just start to think about it now 
Now we are in a kneeling position. If this was in yoga, you would think of this like a crescent pose, but or a, uh, a kneeling position. So if you have a mat and you need to roll it up a little bit and give yourself some cushioning, please do so, okay? I'm actually gonna do it just so you can see. I'm gonna put my left knee on that cushioning. I'm gonna take my hands to the left side and then I'm going to take my right leg forward. Now start in this 90-90 position, okay? you're going to almost feel like as if you're tucking under and squeeze your left glute for everything you got. You should feel a, con uh, a stretch in your quad and up by your hip flexor. If you feel that you could go deeper into it, go for it, but don't lose that contraction, okay? I don't want you arching your back because you're gonna lose the stretch, okay? So we're going to squeeze the glute. I find if you squeeze that fist, it really helps. Keep your chest up, your chin up, and we're going to almost pulse a little bit into it. So we're going to go 15, 14, 13, 12. Keep contracting. 11. Keep squeezing that butt cheek. 10, 9. Keep squeezing. 8. Keep squeezing. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and back out. Hands come down to the left, and we switch sides. So we're on our right knee. We take the left foot up. Now, I like to tuck my toes under. I just feel like um, it's a little more uh, contracted or it's a little safer on my kneecap. But if you like it pointed, go for it, okay? It really doesn't matter as long as your knee feels comfortable. Taking that, really think about that little tuck under. Squeeze your right glute, I again, a nice cue, squeeze your fist as well. You want to be squeezing your butt cheek as hard as you're squeezing your fist. Maybe you'll come forward a little bit and it's a little pulse, but really it's the squeeze. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, chest up, chin up, three, two, and one. Perfect. Hands down to the right side, step back. So hopefully you're starting to feel your glutes. One more exercise, and then we are going to check and see how our squat is. So this is called the cook hip raise. Think of it like a bridge position, but you're going to pull in a knee. So come with your feet about hip bone distance apart, walk them in slightly but not too close, and then pull your right knee in towards the chest. Make sure you're pushing down on the left heel and the inner edge and the big toe on that left foot. You're going to keep pulling that knee in. You lift up a little bit and down, okay? You're really trying to think about activating your right glute. Now, in this position, make sure that when you lift and lower, the knee, left knee, doesn't wobble out to the side. Imagine that it is caught in between two tracks and it has to stay right in between, okay? The other thing that you'll notice is make sure you don't lift the knee away from you. We're pulling the knee in so that we're not using our low back muscles to lift. We're actually using our glute muscles. So this locks the hip in position and doesn't allow you to move your pelvic area at all. Three more, guys. Again, when you first start this, maybe it'll be hard for you even to lift up. It's a very small move. Last one. And switch sides. So now my right foot is down, my left knee is pulling in, and I lift and I lower, and I lift. Now I'll say, I find this side easier for me. Just like in the kneeling position, when I was in that kneeling lunge stretch and I was activating my glute, I found it easier to activate this glute. Over time with practice, that will start to become more active. Guys, five more, just five more. Here's five, 
You're doing great. Four more. Four. Remember, you're pushing into the heel and the inner edge and the big toe. Good. Last two. Last two. And last one. All right. Let's bring ourselves up. This is it. We're going to see if our squat got better, okay? Now, you do not have to use a weight for this position, but this goblet squat with a press away can be used to help increase the mobility even more, okay? Let's do the squat just without for a minute and see how we do. So how's it feel? Oh, yeah. I don't know about you. I feel a lot better, even with that knee. I feel like I've got more, okay? You can stay without the weight if you want to. I'm going to show you the goblet squat with the press away. We're going for, excuse me, we got the hiccups, six, okay? So we squat down to our degree, we push back in and stand. Squat, press away, in and stand. So if the weight's heavy enough, do you see how it's kind of dropping me down? That'll get me even deeper into my squat position. Whew, I'm feeling this, which is what I'm looking for. One more, guys. One more and you're done. And up, 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 up. All right. Woo. So, there are phases to mobility. This would be a nice beginner mobility one, okay? We call this phase one, lower body mobility. Think of doing it, you know, um, the mobility parts as much as you can, as many times as you can. Add on the activation, so that was the cook hip and the lunge stretch with the squeeze and the squat maybe three times a week or add that in when you're going to do your uh, lower body workout. This would be a nice little warm up because now you're ready. You're ready to go right into a workout. So uh, we'll see if these are popular. I will introduce to you guys phase two, phase three and uh, see how it goes. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this lower body mobility program. And uh, have a wonderful day, guys. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Thanks again.